creative redundancy without a three knife challenge, I guess. I'm jumping in on this one. I like steel. Though, this is not my oldest knife. Actually, this one was bought in 2017. It is a actually pretty poor example of my first knife which was a trade bear paw. I don't know where they made them at back in the 80s. Somewhere I assume in New York or Pennsylvania. Anyways, that's a Chinese model. They made one. And it does have a little bit of an edge to it. But just the bolsters are starting to separate, the wooden scales are starting to separate just a little bit. Lockup is kind of crappy. It's, I guess it's okay, there's a little bit of length on there. And it's just thinner than the original ones. Now the Schrade Bear Paw is a knockoff of the Buck 110. And used to be as a very good one. Now it's just, eh. but I do keep it in my gym bag, so I have a backup knife in case something happens. I need one. So there's some paper shredding. Not all that great of feather sticks. But When they reduced the size of the knife, the handle, they never bothered to reduce the size of the case, so, which back in my first couple I had, you had to fight, you had to shove them in the case pretty hard to get them to fit, and the case would form around the knife. Now. My oldest, truly oldest one, is this Blackjack Skinner. I've had it since the mid 90s. I literally skinned my first deer with it. Probably about the only deer I ever skinned. Not much of a hunter. I put this one away for a long time and then started to uh, decide yeah, kind of stupid to pay over a hundred dollars for a knife back in 19, I think it was 94, 93, 94. The knife was made in Effingham at the Blackjack facility there, which is no longer, and I have a horrible edge on it right now, so it's not going to cut paper worth a damn. This one I might actually have to send out to have the edge the redone on it because I've been trying to do something with it and I just haven't been able to get an edge going at all. So, I mean, it'll, it'll cut me, it'll kind of cut paper, but nothing impressive at all. Of course, yeah, it'll. is not good at all.
definitely need to do some work on it. Now my smallest ones, this is just a little case, American made, a little pocket knife, gentleman's knife I guess. And this is the LB3, which is a shrade, also Chinese made. And unfortunately, the uh, craftsmanship on this one is pretty poor too. The bolsters are coming apart. It's just not well made. I do believe Taylor really goofed these ones up too. But it does have a a little bit of an edge on it. Or maybe not. Yeah. So. Yeah, a little case. As soon as I got it, I just put it away. I wasn't real impressed with it. I might have carried it a couple times, but nothing really interesting. I wasn't interested in carrying it, I should say. So the edge on it's, yeah, it's okay. We'll cut an apple if I needed to. So. pocket you know, these two gentlemen knives I don't carry those ones often this one stays in a bag so it doesn't get carried very often in my gym bag like I said this one's always with me just about all the time so, but there's a couple other that I don't carry very often just for other logistic regions I'll show you them that gets edited <laughs> Now, in this case is where I keep my Beretta for like for my range time when it's not on the nightstand. And this particular knife is A Chinese made Aussate blade called Sema. Sema, I guess it's a common if it will ever focus. I guess that's a common manufacturer down there. It's a very nice knife. I enjoy it. it costs like twenty dollars on Amazon. I'm not going to feather stick with it because I just don't have anything up here in the reloading room to do that. I had to buy a different sheath for it. Now another one of my small ones is the Buck. And that one stays in this case also. So those all three just stay in there like that. So it doesn't get you those ones get don't get used very often anymore because they stay in the case. Now over here in the Powell guns. We have a piece of shit Mossberg. 308 rifle. Don't have to worry about somebody getting hurt with one of those things. The damn things don't work. 
in this rifle case, I shoot the SOG. So I've had this one for about well, 20 years, 25 years, close to it. And like I said, it stays on this rifle case. Seeking Japan, if it would ever focus. There we go. I've never had an edge put on it, never needed to. I've never used it much. It, it sat in the box for a long time. And then, um, let's see, which model was this? Doesn't say, but it's Seeky Japan. Off eight. I'll come back up a little bit later and put all this stuff away. Now another one of my old ones, oldest ones, and it doesn't get used very often either, is this Blackjack 1.7. It was also an Effingham era. Trying to get a good. I bought this from a gentleman a couple years ago. So it's at least 20 years old, probably more like 24, 25 years old. Still has the original edge on it. This one's for. I have it for just simply if I need to start poking holes on people. And that's what the original Randall number one, which is this is a direct and total and complete copy of, was designed or, or was used for. And it was originally designed just as a regular generic hunting knife. But it was very popular during the Second World War and still is even today. And this blackjack version of it is a very nice, very nice D2 blade also. And I'm not going to go, I don't have any paper or wood up here to go hacking on. So as you can see, I'm in the reloading room. So those are my knives, or some of them.